everyone, welcome to Cards by Kendra. Today I'm excited to share with you video number two in my Halloween video series featuring Whimsy Stamps Haunted Paper Pad. I'll be mass producing 20 cards today, but first let me show you these gorgeous papers that, are, that came in this paper pack. There are a total of 24 double-sided sheets. There's two of each design. And I'll tell you, I had a very difficult time deciding which side to use because I just, I love them all. What's great about this paper pack is there's just so many that have these awesome pictures on there that really are the focal point of your card. You just have to cut them down. This is the back side of the paper pack. And like I said, I had a hard time picking which side to use. The ones that have the patterns, I saved some of those to use for cards for later because I'm really trying to get into the slimline card making. I've only made one in my whole card making career. Um, and so I'm planning on using some of the pattern papers later. But for today, I'll be picking out 10 of the designs and I'll be making 20 different cards. So let's get to that. Now I don't have very many Halloween themed stamps, so I decided to create my own digital images, which I've done here and printed those out on my laser printer. And I've used my brother's scan and cut to cut out some of these images. I cut out the melting trick or treat sign and the ghosts and also the witches and the sentiments I'll be cutting out from this later. Some of the sentiments say, witch please, you are beautiful. Um, the little mummy one in the middle I ended up not using for this particular segment, but these are some of the other sentiments that I created and printed out, and I'll be cutting these into strips. I'm keeping this very simple. And I also wanted to show you some of the others that I created and printed out, but um, decided not to use. I did use the spooky that's on here, but these other images I didn't end up using for this project. But I wanted to show them to you anyway. My, my printer was acting up and it smudged some of the areas. So there's like some black spots on this one especially. I don't know what happened. I guess it was um, my ink toners getting low. But I ended up not really using much of these either. But I really like them and I'm excited to use them for future cards. So I've gone through the paper pack and I've divided these up into what I'll be cutting into three inch strips basically down the middle so that I can make two different cards. Um, and then I've picked the ones that have a big image that I'll be cutting down to fit on an A2 size card. So the three inch strips I'll be able to make actually four different cards with the same design. And then these pattern papers I'm saving for later. So I'm first cutting the six inch pieces of paper down the middle for these designs. And some of them I'm setting aside to use later, but I will be using the ones with the moon here, the owl, and um, I'm setting aside those others. But here, I had a difficult time trying to figure out which side, which side to cut off, because I really liked both sides. I wish that I could have used the whole thing. Um, at first, I thought I was going to use the big tree, and then I decided, no, I'm going to use the, the smaller tree, and then I can use the big tree two-inch piece for something else. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting each of these down to four inches by five and a quarter inches so that I can put those on a piece of card stock uh, or the card base, and it have a little bit of a different color showing through. Most of them I ended up using a black card base, but I did pull in some orange. I think this particular design was the hardest one for me to choose. <laughs> I ended up using the one with the bigger moon just because I thought that it would stand out more, but I really love the other side also. So I probably will have to purchase me another paper pack so that I can use the other designs because I really love them all. So I'm just going to continue to cut all of these down and um, then we'll be moving on to figuring out what sentiments to put on each of these. Here are the backgrounds for um, 12 cards, six different designs that I've cut down to four by five and a quarter. 
And then here are the three inch pieces. I'm, I'll be using the moon and the one with the owl. I'm saving this one with the house for later because I think that'll look really cool on one of my slimline cards. Um, but I ended up using the orange one with the pumpkins and then both of the scary looking trees. And I'm saving the two inch strips also for later. So I'm going to start with my three inch pieces and I thought that the ghost looked really good with the scary looking tree. I kind of thumbed through all of the others and didn't think that it would look good on any of these others because the, the really the design is the focal point. So the scary tree ones were perfect for the ghost. Um, here I'm just trying to decide which side I want to use. And I think I ended up going with the ones where the trees were sticking out from the right hand side. And then I decided to save the others for later. Um, my sentiment that I had originally said, you are beautiful, but the ghost kind of looked a little scary. So I decided not to use that one. But here I'm, um, I decided to use the moon with the witch. That was perfect. And then the melting trick or treat I thought went really well with these pumpkins here. So I'll be coloring a lot of the sentiments with Copic markers here shortly. So now I'm just trying to match up the rest of these sentiments that I had cut down and figure out which one to use on all of the other backgrounds for the cards. And I really like the slanted, scary looking font on this trick or treat. So I thought it matched this creepy looking jack-o'-lantern um, here. This, the eyes of the owl were white. So I figured I would just keep this white and there we go. We're moving, moving on to the next one. Now, because there's white, uh, a white shadow on the grave stone and the tree, um, I ended up picking the spooky for one of the cards, but because I didn't have two of the same size spooky, I ended up using a different sentiment for the other design that was the same. Um, but here I'm just picking different sentiments that I think go well with the cards. And um, the moon, I just, I love these big moons. These are all so awesome. On that one, it had like Happy Halloween that looked like it was dripping blood. Um, here, I struggled the most with this card. I really liked that Halloween, but I only had one of those. Now, I liked this orange and yellow Halloween, but I didn't want the white on there, and I didn't feel like fussy cutting that out. So I ended up just going with the little teeny tiny boo for that card. Now I'm just going through and trying to pick out the different Copic marker colors that I think match some of the colors in these backgrounds. For this one, I tried to match up the gray that was in the moon. So I used warm gray W0. For the boo card, I used BG45, which was Nile blue. For the trick or treat, I used Y35 maize. I used E50 for the, the tan looking moon. And I just used my little scrap piece of cardstock just to make sure that they matched exactly. And um, I thought I did pretty good. So here now I'm just coloring the centers of the boo that I had cut out earlier. That's the sentiment that I decided to use on the second purple design card that I didn't have the other spooky for. So I also took the black marker and ran that along the edge so that the edges wouldn't be white. So I wanted the cards to be pretty much the same. So I decided I had to cut down some of these sentiments to make them the same size. And now I'm just going through and shading in all of these sentiments where I had matched up the Copic colors. And I obviously sped up this process. Um, but really and truly, this did not take me too terribly long to make 20 adorable Halloween cards. So I hope that you're enjoying this process. Um, I tend to not use pattern paper very much anymore because um, I've just recently got into mixed media, but I absolutely love this paper pad. And now I'm excited and I want to pull out some of my other paper pads and do the same thing because you can easily make a ton of cards in a short amount of time. And I really like that. 
when I'm mass producing cards, I like to use my Zutter Dream Cuts paper cutting machine. It allows you to cut any size paper up to 12 inches wide, and it will allow you to cut it in half or into thirds. So this is really handy and it makes um, cutting up your card bases go really fast. I went ahead and cut out all 20 of my card bases. I did about 10 of the um, horizontal cuts and then 10 of the vertical cuts so that they would be top folding. And here I'm just scoring the um, horizontal card cuts at four and a quarter. And then for the top fold cards, I'm scoring those at five and a half. So for my sentiments, I have a folder full of scraps in every single color. And I am just trying to find some scraps that would work well as a frame for each of my sentiments. I'm just wondering, does anybody else organize their scraps like I do? I have a crate with hanging file folders in it, and I've got all different color fold file folders. Just curious how you guys store your scraps. Let me know in the comments below. So there were a couple of these cards that I didn't like having the black card base because it kind of got lost with the background, like this one here. I ended up switching the card base to a orange color, which I used Stampin' Up's Pumpkin Pie. And then for the creepy looking pumpkin that said Trick or Treat, I ended up using Cajun Craze for, for the card base for those two. Now here I'm just coloring the, um, the dripping Trick or Treat sign. Um, I used, YR68, which is orange. And then I actually tried out two different darker colors. On the first one, I did RV29 um, for the darkest. And then I did the orange YR68. And then I used YR07. Um, and then I outlined it in black so that you couldn't see the white edge. But for the second one, I ended up using Prawn R24. And I ended up liking that one better. It blended, it blended way better. And for the yellow color in the middle of that, I used Y19. Okay, so now I am taking my three inch pieces and because they were three by six, now I'm having to cut them down to be three by five and a half so that they'll be the entire length of the card. So I've pre-cut a bunch of um, frames for all of these three inch pieces. Now this one here, I cut at three and a half but there were a few that I didn't want the frame to be as wide, so I used three and a quarter. And I'm just using some Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive to glue my pieces down. And the reason I like to use the liquid glue on some things is because it gives me some wiggle room so I can get it exactly centered the way I want it. Now I'm popping up the sentiment using some 3D foam squares. And um, I decided not to show you guys all of the gluing down for all of my cards because that would just take entirely too long. But I basically went through the same process. Um, if it was something that needed to be centered, I used my liquid glue. Um, if it was something small, I used my Nuvo pen. Um, if it was a pretty straightforward, just gluing the background down onto the card base, I used my tape runner. So for the, the witch one here, I ended up not popping up the witch, but I did pop up the sentiment witch please. Um, so for this one, I'm just using my tape runner and um, eyeballing it. <laughs> it makes things go a lot quicker, but I did use the 3D foam squares to pop up the sentiments. So for this spooky one, I didn't use 3D foam squares. I just glued it directly onto the background and I did the same thing with the boo. I did misplace the exclamation point, but then I found it and now I've misplaced the period that goes at the bottom of the exclamation point. But anyway, I, I popped up all the rest of the sentiments. Um, I just wanted to quickly go through these and explain what I did as I was gluing them down. So pretty much all of the sentiments were popped up using 3D foam squares with the exception of a couple. I was trying to keep my video as short as possible. So that's why I decided to spare you of the gluing down process for the cards. But this one here, I cut out some numbers 2020 because I thought that went really well with the sentiment boo sheet 
2020 is bushy. I wrote is on there and it's not really neat, but hey, it works and it makes me laugh. That's exactly how I feel about 2020. But I think all of these cards turned out really cute. Let me know which one is your favorite down in the comments below. I'm also doing a giveaway. The last time I checked my YouTube channel, I had 199 subscribers. I was one away from 200. So if I can get to 200 subscribers, one more subscriber, then I'll do a giveaway for these digital files that I created uh, that I sell in my Etsy store. I'll send you all of the files to one lucky winner. So all you have to do is just comment on my video below. I appreciate so much all of my subscribers and supporters to my channel. I appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch this. It's World Card Making Day, so I had to create a bunch of cards. And since it's October, I just thought Halloween would be the perfect way to start. Next, I'll be moving on to Christmas cards. So let me know what you think about my 20 Halloween cards. And um, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, be sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also follow me on Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook at Cards by Kendra. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day.